Happy Socktober, y'all! So, I had some questions about my stool and my setup, so I'm going to show that, and then we're going to crank a tube. So, the stool I have here was bought at Maryland Sheep and Wool. My husband bought it. It's handmade. I like that I can sit with it this way, I can turn it and sit saddle style, or I can turn it so the curve is the other way. But you have to find something that works for your table, the height, etc. It's clamped onto a table that I got from Earlbacker. So these tables you can get from the company. And then, of course, here's my whole machine. Somebody asked about the mast. I'll show the mast. I'll, I'll have the tube on and then I'll show you how you engage the heel spring. But your yarn goes through your mast, under your hook here, through this little hole, under this, and then down into the hole. So this moves up and down. This is your brake. So I'll show you that for your heel spring. Um, and then you thread your yarn in. I just have a cart here with a bunch of stuff on it. This is one of my lights, and then I have the clamp table light. These are from Ikea, and they just hang on my shelf, and I'm able to hang my weights here and just... It's kind of a mess, but you guys wanted to see. But, you know, it is what it is. So that's that, and then let's get a tube on the machine, and then I'll show you how you put your heel spring on when you have yarn in it, okay? So I have you really far away from the machine right now, so I can show you guys. This is the yarn. We're going to do another watercolor by Lanes du Nord Watercolor Sock. This is color 100. Okay, so let's get this on the machine, and then I'll, I can actually show you threading the machine. So you got to remember, it's kind of like, there's my darning needle. It's kind of like threading a sewing machine, not like a sewing machine, but you have to thread it right or else it's not going to crank right. So let's get that going. So let's put our bonnet on. Oh, and I did want to show you guys, I redid my marks. Let me take this out real quick. Somebody asked about the marks on my cylinder. Okay. So halfway marks, I redid it so the whole needle wasn't in red. Okay, so it's only now just the, I don't know what you want to call this, <laughs> but so now I know everything in front of the red is half, and I have them on both sides, and I fixed those. Then I have the blue, which is half and half for the opposite direction. The purple is my target needle, so if I'm doing a toe or a heel, and if I wanted to do a toe or heel on the back side, I marked the purple on the back side. Then I realized what these were after the last video when we tried doing a rounding toe, rounded toe and I did it wrong. You're going to decrease one stitch every row and then you'll decrease two and then two and then you're at your target. So that's what the, perp the, the pinkish coral color is, is for that. So I hope this helps people with marking their machines. I know people have other marks. Um, some people mark like a deep heel. A, a really good deep heel to me is like four stitches. So I would do four stitches like that in addition to everything on the front. So technically I could mark like this needle here. I could mark like a mark here meaning these are the four, and that's the one I would want to stop at when I'm increasing again. So maybe I will get, this is nail polish. Um, the purple is Sharpie marker, but the other stuff is nail polish. Uh, so you can use nail polish, you can remove it, it, makes it really easy to move your marks if you've messed up. So again, I have 12, I have a 64 cylinder. This is 10 stitches to my target and then 12 in between the targets, okay? So it gives you a 12 stitch heel or toe, just so you know. All right, let's put you back <laughs> and we'll get this machine going. Oh boy, okay. Without turning it off. All right, can you see the mass? You can see the mass, okay. All right, so we'll put those back down. Get 
this in here. This is your setup bonnet or your start cast on bonnet. I actually like that I redid my marks because I would sometimes get confused and be like, oh, is the one that's outlined in red on the front or on the back? So that really actually helped me a lot. So now when I'm doing every other stitch, it should always fall right after my half mark. So it fell right after the blue. The one I hang here is going to be right after the red. And it's going to follow suit for those four halfway marks, which is really nice. Because it tells me that I hung them correctly. So it should be right after this blue one. Okay. So you're going <clears> to <throat> take your buckle. This is your buckle. You put it on your bonnet. And then my weights, I have all of my weights. So I have my stem weight and my two additional weights. And I have them in a koozie so they don't fall off. You hang that on. All right. Let's get some waste yarn. It's going to be a hung hem, so I need a color. <coughs> Excuse me, I knew that was coming. I'm going to use a color that's a good contrast to the green. So to thread your machine for the Earl Backer, now I'm not sure how other machines work. There are other people out there who have really good knowledge in groups. Also, Karen Rommel, I can't remember, Karen, uh, I'll try to post her YouTube down below. She has a ton of videos also, and she has different machines, so... She's a very good source of knowledge for other machines. All right, so it went in the hole. I should have done that slower. Okay, in the back hole. I'll explain this in a second. Then it goes under this little hook. And then it goes in this little notch. Okay. And then it's going to go, um, sorry, not under this one, but only under this one. Okay. Because when this lifts up, this is breaking the yarn. Uh, not breaking it as in um, tearing it apart, but breaking it as in pausing. Okay? So. Let's put some yarn on there and I'll show you. So you, crank, you can only crank halfway around or about halfway because you have to get these needles in the cylinder to pop up. And then you can continue hanging your bonnet on. All right. All right. So now they're all on and we'll crank around. Now I'll show you with the waist yarn. So to put your heel spring on, you need this right here. This is connected to a weight. It is dusty. Sorry. All right. So this is your heel spring. Okay. This is going to pull the yarn. This is lifting the weight. So you have to have this set up right so it lifts your weight. So when you pull this down, you're taking this little thread here from under here and putting it in the catch. Now when I lift this up, it's gonna lift this up, which lifts this whole mechanism here up and puts this break on. So it gives you all this tension and it's holding it tight right here in this spot. That's where it's holding tight. If this goes all the way up, you don't have this threaded right. So if this ends up all the way up here, it's not threaded correctly here. So you have to have it done right. So you would take this off, fix how you threaded it, then try it again. Okay. So now my heel spring is on and it'll make the tension in my cylinder tighter. You can see how it's pulling down on that, okay? I am gonna take it off because I don't want my waist yarn to be that tight. I don't think it really matters. But that is how you set up your heel spring, okay? I'm gonna stop on the 64th needle, which is before my red mark. Number one is after my red mark. I'm going to zoom you guys in to finish doing all this. So let me reset. Yeah. I said I was going to explain this thing and then I didn't. So you have two spots on the back of your Erlbacher. Sorry, it doesn't want to focus on this piece. You get the idea though. So this piece was from CSM Supplies. It comes with a nut, and a washer, a nut, a bolt, and the wing nut. And then this piece that has a rubber stopper in the end.
And this is lycra. So lycra goes um, through this hole and then straight to here. You don't want to run it with your sock yarn, with your project yarn, because it the tension on this is going to be way different than your yarn. So you want it to go, again, through this straight to here, okay? And then the two can go together into your machine. So this is white lycra. It will semi-change the color of your yarn, but very little. Like, it's not strong enough. You can buy lycra in all kinds of colors. Um, and CMS Supplies is the company that Jamie Mayfield owns, and that's where I bought this piece from, okay? So that is strictly for lycra. Some people have setups where they have different, like, all different yarns that can go through, um, for color work. I've not, got, I've not gotten that far with this. So, yep. So let's get this on here, and we'll just do a hung hem and a tube. All right, sorry, adjusting. I was trying to get a good in angle there so you guys can really see the color change on this. <clears throat> Again, I already put my waist yarn in. I stopped at the last needle, number 64, because it's a 64 cylinder. I am putting ripcord in, which is 50 or 65 pound fishing line. Just goes to the first needle, hold your tails, crank one round. Last needle closes, pull your tail in. Okay, now I'm going to put my project yarn on, which is that watercolor sock. Let me find the end. Okay, there it is. Well, I'm glad I got to show you guys um, how you thread the machine. We're going to do a hung hem. We're going to do 40 row hung hem. So let me reset this. Stopping close to the front, but before needle number one starts um, going into motion, because you need to hang your first stitch there, taking your weights off, carefully folding your fabric inside itself, okay? I know I say okay a lot, and uh, I don't know, I've never really taught, so... I guess it's just my, like, oh, okay, everybody's good. <sighs> All right, I like holding the first row of my project yarn as close as I can to where the needles are, only because I'm not pulling those stitches out real far. Like, if you were trying to hang it from out here, you're, like, really pulling them across. So I, I think a lot of people do this, too. They just hold it close to the inside of the cylinder, so it's real quick and easy to put these on. Okay. Now, if you, you can buy a different color fishing line. So if that's helpful to you, you know, do what works for you and is helpful for you to be prepared to do what you need to do, right? To make your task easier. We're trying to make, we're not trying to make it more difficult, we're only trying to make it easier. Oh, what I didn't mention, which I always mention in all the videos, when you're hanging the hem, when you kind of get around here and you're pushing, these could fall off. So just be real careful not to, like, you know, just be aware. You have to just be aware of everything you're doing. You know, you can't... People ask, oh, is it easy? What's the, what's the learning curve? Now there is a learning curve. I feel, I will tell, I will say this about any, any new thing you're trying to do, any new tool you're trying to use. 
There's a learning curve. You're not just going to jump in and be like, I did it. I mean, yes, you might, but there's, in my opinion, I feel like there's always some sort of learning curve. Now, I was a hand knitter before I got my machine. I've been hand knitting and crocheting since about 2004. So, uh, you know, I had a lot of years of knowing how to manipulate yarn before I um, bought this machine. All right, you're going to hang your buckle and your weight back on. And that's putting the downward pressure on the stitches that are hung. Only the ones that are hung. These ones are loose because that downward pressure isn't pulling. You know, it's not pulling on those. So make sure you hold that fabric down whatever way is more comfortable. If it's this way or that way, just hold it down. Crank around to the opposite side so these needles are now exposed. And continue... to hang your hem. You just do every stitch, so. All right. Man, I really appreciate everybody that's been tuning in and watching. I really have been enjoying it. Um, and from the sounds of it, other people have been enjoying it too. And I'm just really appreciative. I know when I first got my machine, I watched as many videos as I could because, again, it's it's intuitive, right? We we are intuitive to what we're doing, but until you actually do it, it's not it's not the same. I watched a bunch of videos before I got my machine, and then I was like, "But I don't have my machine. I'm like hands on. I need to do it at the same time." So it was really nice having the videos that were out there for me. I found my last one, and now it's going to strictly be a tube. So I guess just enjoy the color changes and the noise of the machine. And I'll see you guys, well, when I lift the weights and when I get to the end. I'll reset it so we can at least get an idea of how many rows we've done. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop here because my weight is almost touching the ground and I need to move that up. And then we'll continue going around. That was 110 rows and we're going to keep going.
Okay, I'm gonna lift that one more time because I'm almost touching the ground again. If the weight starts to touch the ground, you will not have the pressure on your machine, on your stitches, I believe, sorry. Um, so you wanna make sure it doesn't hit the ground and then you drop a bunch of stitches. We're getting close to the end of this. I can see the color getting ready to change. All right, I'm gonna crank around to here. See it changed to like a white variegated. So we're gonna stop there. We're gonna cut the yarn, pull the tail in, and I'll take it off. I was at 218 rows plus the 40, so that's 258. So easily, uh, not all the not all skeins, but I can get close to 500 rows per um, 100 grams. Just in case you are curious of that, let's see what color should we put on this. Let's do a white. It's a good contrast to this. So I buy my cones from Earlbacker. You, they have them on CMS supplies, CSM supplies also. So you can buy your waste yarn there. Also, CSM supplies sells yarn on cones. Um, somebody was asking about where I get my yarn on cones from. Well, the most of my yarn is um, put on cones by me. And then this watercolor sock just is on a cone. So not all, you know, you can buy some yarns on cones. So just you gotta do your digging and research, but I know CSM, C, I don't know why I say CMS, CSM Supplies definitely has yarn already preloaded on cones for you in all different um, colors that do different like stripes and whatnot. So let's crank this off. I'll lift you guys up so you can see the color. We'll take the rip cord off. Okay. Bonnet, waist yarn, there's a rip cord. The end of the rip cord is there. You go from the opposite side. It never wants to focus when I do this. Pull that out and then magic comes right off. All right, you just have one end to weave in. Let's bring this down here and I'll show you guys the tube. All right. Now I know sometimes you come across knots in yarn because commercially you can have so many knots per so many yards, I believe. Um, you can unpick the knot, cut the knot out, you know, do your join. You can leave the knot in and just crank over it. It's up to you. If you don't look, think it looks secure, then definitely do what you think needs to be done. So there you go. Here is this final tube with the hung hem. This is a really beautiful colorway, guys. So... All right, until the next video, happy Socktober!